Okay, hi everybody. Let's take a look at this this um, consolidations problem that's going to ask you to determine the account balance in investment in a subsidiary. Okay, so I'll read the, the question to you. On January 1st, 2013, Jackie Corp purchased 30% of the voting common stock of Rob Company, paying $2 million. Jackie properly accounts for this investment using the equity method. At the time of the investment, Rob's total stockholders' equity was $3 million. Jackie gathered the following information about Rob's assets and liabilities whose book values and fair values differed. Okay, and so you have the table of what the book value was and what the fair value was. For buildings, equipment, in a franchise, or franchises, and they give you the estimate life. Now, they tell you that any excess of cost over fair value was attributed to goodwill, which has not been impaired, and Rob Company reports net income of 300000 for 2013, and they paid dividends of 100000 during the year. Now, what's the balance in Jackie Corporation's investment in Rob Company account? All right. So here's how you would solve the answer. By the way, it's 2005. Uh, let me read that in millions. It's two million and five thousand dollars. And here's what you've got to do. You've got to look down here and you've got to say, all right, here's my book value, my fair value. Here's my excess of fair value over book value. So, you know, if you wanted to follow the Excel math there, I hit the F2, you'll just see I'm just subtracting cells F36 from E36, okay? Um, the life is 15 years, and I know I'm going to need the amortization later on. So I'm going to take that excess, and I'm going to divide it by the life because I need to recognize the amortization on the stepped-up value when we've had an increase of fair value over book value. And I go through the same calculations for equipment and franchise. Compute the difference, divide by the life, and as a result, I come up with what the total amortization would be as if we had purchased 100% of Rob, but we didn't. We only purchased 30%. So I've got the total amortization, and if I multiply that times 30%, that's the amount of the amortization that I need to record on our books using the equity account. So let me slide down, and I'll show you how I compute that ending balance. Okay. So here's the entries that we're going, to, we're going to record. On January 1st, I'll just put the mouse off to the side here, we'll debit the investment in the subsidiary account for $2 million in credit cash. Then at the end of the year, using the equity method, we're going to record our share of the income. And they told, and I'll click right here and show you, they told us, and I clicked on F1, I really meant to click on F2 here. Okay, they told us, um, that Rob made 300000 and 30% of that flows to us since we own 30% of Rob. So 300000 times 30% gets us 90000 That will increase the investment account, and we'll credit some kind of income account, which I chose to call uh, equity income from subsidiary. Okay? Um, the next item is the dividends. We're going to receive 30000 in cash. Why? Because they declared 100000 in dividends, we own 30% of it. So we will receive 30000 in cash, and using the equity method, we decrease the investment in the subsidiary for cash that uh, we received from them through dividends. And then the last item is we need to record the amortization. Well, the recording of the amortization, this is on the stepped-up value of fair value versus book value, uh, reduces the investment account. And if you think about it, it's, it, you can think of it as extra amortization, extra depreciation. It would reduce the income. So this is essentially an adjustment of the 90000 that we recorded early if we, were to, if we are and we are going to properly account for uh, the purchase price based on our historical cost, not Rob's, but ours. So with the stepped-up value, we need to record amortization on it. And that's the 55000 that uh, uh, we discussed right here. Okay, so we're going to reduce the equity income from subsidiary 
by 55,000 and um, reduce the investment in Rob Corporation by that same amount. So the ending balance is really the two million purchase price plus our share of the income less what we received in dividends from the subsidiary less the amount of the amortization and when we put that all together we get two million five thousand dollars and that's the balance in Jackie Corp's investment in Rob Company's account at the end of the year.